Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the animation editing workflow between Affinity Designer and Cartoon Animator, and how you can generate and edit unique characters. Before getting started, we need to check a few important things. Start off by going to the Affinity Designer website and downloading the EXE version, which is required to synchronize with Cartoon Animator. While downloading, you can visit the CTA page to check out tutorials as well as free template assets for both vector-based and PSD characters. You can also check out the documentation in the wiki for more comprehensive instructions. Ok, let's get into creating and editing your character first. In Preferences, you'll want to make sure that you've selected Affinity as your default SVG editor. You'll see an icon on the toolbar that gives us the option to open an existing file or a new object, which will open a new canvas in Affinity. From there, I'll just proceed to draw a simple circle that we can send back to CTA. It's important to remember that Affinity only saves in its own format, so what you need to do is locate the path of your object and overwrite the existing SVG file via export. Make sure that the format is set to small SVG as this is the format supported by CTA. Once we've successfully overwritten the file, we'll then bring it into CTA as a prop. Next, we can start using Affinity's powerful features to add some details to our circle as we're going to end up with an ice cream cone in the end. I'll draw some quick curves and edit the line width for a bit more variety. After that, I'll select all of the curves and in Layers, select Expand Stroke. With everything selected, I can then go over to the Shape Builder tool and trim the excess areas of the curves outside the circle. I'll then proceed to duplicate the circle and give it a different color, and one more time for a cherry on top. A simple upside down triangle can be used for the cone. Once everything is finished, we can then group all of the layers and export once again, which will update our prop in CTA. Now it's time to set it up with a rig so we can make it move. Currently, our prop is a single image, so let's return to Affinity ungroup our current layers, and organize them into separate groups based on the different components. This will give us more options for animating the individual elements separately later on, and it will also automatically assign bones to each component when we update and return to CTA. To connect the bones, we need to enter into Composer mode and open up the Bone Editor. I'll select the bone for the middle scoop and connect it with the cone base, then for the top scoop to the middle one, and the cherry to our top scoop. Next, I'll open up the Spring Editor, select the parent bone at the base, and click Assign to Group. After that, we can preview to see the natural bouncing spring effect. Ok, that's the basic workflow for a simple prop with bone structure. Now let's take a look at how you can edit your characters. I'll use this cute little raindrop character for this scenario, and head into Composer mode where we can click SVG Launch to send it to Affinity for editing. I'll start off by locking the bone layers to avoid any accidental modifications, and then use the selection tool so I can select the individual elements of my image group. From there, I can use the curve adjustment tool to adjust the shape to be a bit more rounded, since the end result is to make it look like an egg character as opposed to a raindrop. I can then modify the color scheme by choosing a different fill color and also modifying the gradient sliders. Lastly, I also want to select the eyes and mouth layers and change their color to black to enhance visibility. 
Notice that some areas are unaffected when doing this, as they have stroke rather than curve attributes. These need to be selected individually and have their colors adjusted one by one. Follow the same process by copying the CTA temp path in Explorer and then exporting the SVG to overwrite once again. In CTA, we can then test out our newly updated egg character and see the results. You can also use the sprite editor to make detailed individual edits as well. If we open it up, we can launch our face sprite directly to Affinity using the Edit in Vector Editor button. Keep in mind that this will only launch the selected sprite, whereas you can use the main launch button in the toolbar to send the entire character over. Let's try editing this sprite to give our egg a broken look. I can start by expanding the canvas using the Artboard tool and then click and drag on the various nodes to create a more splattered look. Here, I've also decreased the transparency slightly as well. Now, when we're exporting, we also have a face SVG, so we want to make sure that we overwrite that one instead of our main character SVG. You can see that this character has a simple bone structure that allows it to sort of jiggle as a raindrop. We can enter into the spring editor to test it out with our egg as well. As you can see, it's a simple workflow to completely change your character, yet retain a lot of the properties of the original, such as the bone structure and spring effects. Okay, finally, let's do a little simple animation. I'm going to bring in this cool skillet prop and use the color adjustment tool to modify our egg character's transparency and appearance. After that, we can use the motion pilot tool ensuring that our skillet is set as the leader in the flock settings with a short delay. And then record a quick animation with mouse puppet movement, where our cute little egg will follow along. That's it for this tutorial guys, be sure to check out our PSD character creation tutorial as well, if you prefer working in that format. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.